Welcome to Mr Chalk's Revision Tips. In this video, we will look at Group 1 elements, Group 7 elements, and Group 0 elements. So, the periodic table, also known as the periodic table of elements, goes and it shows all of the elements that we know to exist and it gives us some idea about how many electrons they have in their add shell and how many shells of electrons there are. So group one elements are alkali metals. We find them in group one. They are all very reactive and all have one electron in their add shell. Group seven elements or halogens are quite toxic. They all have seven electrons in their outer shell. And group zero or group eight elements are referred to as noble gases. They have four outer shells, so are unreactive. And unreactive elements are called inert. So there are more than a hundred different elements in the periodic table. And an example of the periodic table is shown here. Each group goes and contains elements with the same number of electrons in their outer shell. And each period that goes across goes and shows how many shells of electrons that particular element has. So the horizontal rows are called periods. The vertical columns are called groups. Elements in the same group all have similar chemical properties. Elements also have the same number of electrons in their add shell as the group we're in. That's really important to remember. And elements have the same number of electron shells as the row they are in. So if we think about the questions, how many electrons would an element in group 2 have in its add shell? Well, because it's in group 2, it will have two electrons. So group 1 elements are called alkali metals. They all have certain characteristics. So they're all soft and can be cut by a knife. They increase in softness as you go and move down the group. They all have a low density. So lithium, sodium and potassium all float on water, for instance. They all have low melting and boiling points. Because they're metals, they're good conductors of heat and electricity. And because they're metals, they're all relatively shiny or are at least shiny when they're freshly cut before they react with oxygen. So some more information about group one elements. They're all found in group one of the periodic table. They all have similar chemical properties. They all readily lose an electron from their outer shell to form an ion with a positive charge. The atoms of the group get larger as you go down the group. So lithium would be the smallest atom and you would go and get progressively larger. So for instance, potassium would be a lot larger. So this means that the outer shell of electrons gets further away from the nucleus and is shielded by more electron shells. So the further an electron is from the positive nucleus, the easier it is for that electron to be lost in a reaction. So therefore, as you go down the group, the further away that electron gets from the positive nucleus, so the more reactive the atom becomes. So if we look at this example of a question, so figure two shows sodium being put in the water, describe three observations that you can see when the sodium is put into water. So remember that you'll need to state what happens when the sodium hits the water? Think about what gas is produced. 
So some things that you could include in the answer would be it could look like it's melting, it would give off bubbles, the sodium would go and float around the surface, the size of the sodium would decrease as it dissolves, hydrogen gas would be given off. Group 7 atoms are found in, uh, in group 7 and all have 7 electrons in their outer shell. They're non-metals, so they do not conduct electricity. They're brittle and crumbly when solid, poisonous and smelly, and they become darker in colour as you move down the group. Because they're in group 7, they only need one electron to fill the outer shell. So they're very reactive because they readily can go and grab that one electron. So they all gain an electron in reactions to form negative ions. So they all end up with a charge of minus one. They all have similar chemical properties. Same as before, as you go down the group, the atoms get larger. So this means that the outer shell gets further away from the nucleus. So the further the outer shell is from the positive nucleus, the harder it is for it to attract another electron. So therefore, the higher up the group you go, the more reactive the atom will be. So in this question, so group seven elements are all toxic. They can all be used as antiseptics, etc. There's a graph below. So the graph shows the boiling points of different halogens. Describe the trend in the boiling point from fluorine to iodine. So that is just to describe the pattern. So when a chlorine or a chlorine atom forms a chloride ion, it gains one electron. What charge does chloride ion have? And what would the word equation be for the reaction between sodium and chlorine? So have a think, then have a look at the answers. And also, in the UK, we add chlorine to tap water. Suggest some reasons why. So the first one, as you move down, the boiling point increases. We form negative ions. The reaction would be sodium plus chlorine would form sodium chloride. And we add chlorine to water to kill bacteria. So group zero atoms are known as noble gases. So all noble gases have a full outer shell of electrons, so they do not need to lose or gain electrons. So this means that they're very unreactive because they're very stable. They do not normally form bonds with other elements, which means that they exist as individual atoms. Thanks for watching.